we saw the dipping back of the index yesterday and largely being attributed to foreign investors booking profits, but also as they take into consideration some of the inflationary pressure and the kind of impact it's going to have on profit growth for listed companies moving forward. How are inflation concerns impacting your approach to the markets right now? I think it's obviously a big concern and for foreign investors they're also looking at the foreign currency uh, and, and their impact on their investments uh, but, but on overall the earnings we've seen so far especially for the first quarter we, we've not seen a major impact or, or, or on their profit growth uh, but obviously going through the rest of the year we might see some dip in, or, or at least a slowdown in terms of profitability. It shows uh, the kind of mo in the kind of movement we saw yesterday when it comes to some of the counters, just how uh, focused investors are on news flow. I mean, on Wednesday we had both Centum and Carb Acid falling back on the announcement that uh, Centum has uh, planned to sell its 22% stake in the carbon dioxide maker. Yesterday, both those players back on the gainer board, we had Centum rising uh, four and a half percent. What have you made of that news specifically and what this divestment spells for a player like Centum? Actually what they said was that they had exited Kabasid uh, but also in the note they say that they still believed in the long-term value uh, offered by, by Kabasid. So I think investors were getting into Centum because they're, they're announcing results in early in June uh, and they're expecting that those earnings to have been booked uh, and so generally they are positioning ahead of results. Uh, for Kabasid, I guess it's, uh, it was on thin volumes, but, but generally with, with the improved liquidity, obviously that's a counter that investors might start to look at a lot more keenly. Well, sticking to the gainer board, we had East African Portland Cement and Bamburi Cement rank amongst the top five gainers on the day. East African Portland up uh, five and three quarters of a percent, while Bamburi climbed up uh, 2.9 percent. And very divergent to the kind of trend we saw come through from Ati River Mining, it ranking second on the loser board with a 3.5% loss. Eric, how are you viewing the cement players at this stage? Uh, I think there's still some, some pressure on them. Um, I think especially with the new players having come into the market, we, we might see a slowdown in terms of uh, demand for their products. Uh, as, as players sort of jostle for those positions. But, but on overall, I think the construction sector is doing very well. Uh, and so generally, we, we expect growth to start picking up. I think if you look at the volumes traded on those counters, uh, it probably limited and we, uh, probably, uh, probably on thin volumes. Just taking a look at those players specifically, uh, which would rank as a top pick for you? Because we know that for the longest while, it's Ati River Mining that has stood out when it comes to that pack. Yeah, we, we, st we still have it uh, as, a, as, a, as a preferred stock, but it's more now of a hold because it's had a good run. Um, East African Portland has had its challenges. It, it had come off quite significantly, but now with the strengthening of the Japanese yen, the, the concern about the debt that it has also starts lingering, lingering a lot more, but, but also because of its capacity, we, we've also had it as, as a buy. Uh, and, and Baburi as well, it's been a preferred stock and uh, we, we still have it as a buy. To what extent are you looking at what's playing out on the currency market as a factor when looking at these, uh, these players specifically and how you're valuing them? Because we've seen the shilling, for example, coming under extreme pressure given the kind of intervention we've seen from the Central Bank of Kenya. Um, I, th I think there's, there, there, there's something to look at it if you look at what the central bank is doing. It's been buying euros. It's not been buying dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the supply of euros around this time, uh, the flower sector generally from January to April, they, they usually have very good sales. And it appears the central bank might be looking at mopping up that, that, that supply of uh, euros. Uh, so I think from a monetary perspective, it's very well, well thought out. Um, on the stock market, obviously, investors have to be very careful as they get into the market, uh, especially with the inflation outlook. And so currency now becomes a very important factor as you invest into the country. But, but I don't see a very substantial depreciation for the rest of the year. I ask uh, the kind of impact it has on the cement players because we know that for the longest while we've had cheap imports from China specifically posing considerable challenge to some of the local cement manufacturers. So how do you see this coming to bear and uh, possibly changing some of that industry dynamic? 
I, I think what you want to look at also is also on the imports, on the balance of imports, especially on clinker. So if you look at the two players, um, uh, Bamburi and East African Portland, they, have, they, they import clinker very substantially from outside the country. Uh, at the river mining generally relies on locally produced clinker. So from a competitive, from a pricing perspective, at river mining is probably better positioned now than it was probably a few months ago. Obviously, from from a cost perspective and you know imports, uh, you know the, the Chinese imports and India and so forth, they're probably disadvantaged at this point. In the meantime, let's take a look at Safaricom hovering between 380 and 390 at this stage. And uh, many market players saying that they're struggling to see why the market is discounting so much. I mean, as a comparison, MTN trades on a PE multiple at around about 18, while we've got Safaricom trading on a multiple of around 10. Uh, to what extent is this justified in your books or are you looking to plow into Safaricom at these levels? Yes, we, we are slightly above consensus. Uh, we have a, 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 a fair value of 527. The current price is at 380. Uh, and basically what we think is that uh, financial services, basically the M-Pesa platform and data are going to help Safaricom very significantly in the earnings that are going to be released next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we still remain buyers on the stock and we think the earnings which are going to come through next week are going to come well above consensus.